applying something like the Harvard or the Hurricane is absolutely the pinnacle of certainly my flying experience. And I think for many people that we fly, it is the greatest flying experience they've ever had. These aircraft are very powerful. They've got real character. They are noisy, they're hot, but they're aerobatic. So you can really get an experience of what it would have been like uh, not only to train in the aircraft and get to that advanced standard, but get a bit of a flavour of what it may have been like to have to manoeuvre them to fight in them as well. So it, it really sends a shiver down my spine every time I fly them. So the Harvard behind me is an AT-16. So this is a Canadian-built Nordine machine built in Montreal, Quebec in 1942. In fact, it rolled off the production line in December 42. Went to the Canadian Air Force in 42 and trained thousands and thousands of Allied pilots, uh, again based in Ontario, uh, throughout the end of the war period. And it was eventually struck off charge uh, for the Royal Canadian Air Force in 1947. And at that point it went to Sweden and it joined uh, the Air Force there for training purposes before eventually it ended up in private hands in about 1970. So the aircraft had a very long military career training pilots before they went into more powerful aircraft. So many trainers, if you think about the really great trainers that tie them off, and Harvard's definitely amongst them, are not necessarily the easiest aircraft to fly, but what they do is teach really great handling skills. So I think that's one of the reasons why there were 15 and a half thousand of these aircraft built. Uh, they were built in very large quantities to serve that very specific purpose of taking pilots that probably had 100 hours flying more simple aircraft and training them to use uh, a variable pitch propeller, a retractable undercarriage, uh, and some of the more complex systems that would be involved in the fighters that they'd go on to fly. The livery we've chosen for this aircraft represents an aircraft from slightly later in the war, from about 1944, from southern Rhodesia, where training was taking place also for uh, Allied pilots, again, that needed to be away from the combat zone in order to conduct their training. Uh, we just love the scheme, which is primarily why we chose it. I think the one thing I would pick uh, as my favourite thing about the Harvard is just its character. It's an aircraft full, oozing character from that 1940s period. The Harvard has some specific challenges, and I think one of the interesting ones is, is always landing the aircraft, and actually specifically landing it in a crosswind uh, requires really good technique. So again, the Harvard teaches you the right way and the wrong way to do a crosswind landing in a big tailwheel aircraft like this. That's one of the real challenges. We still use exactly the same parts that we used in the Second World War. And there's some amazing uh, examples that we've had where we'll unpack original old stock still wrapped in its original wax paper boxes. So, you know, you really are using uh, these original items that are all 80 years old and they're going back into the aircraft and they're flying again. It really is a remarkably practical aeroplane to fly uh, and um, just one that gives not only us as pilots but people that see it enormous pleasure. You know, when you turn up at an airfield in Harvard, people want to come and say hello and chat to you and learn about it. So it's just a great aeroplane to fly around. We can do whatever our passengers want to do. The aircraft is just as capable today as it was 80 years ago when it rolled off the production line. So if we want to aerobat it, loop it, roll it, barrel rolls, half Cubans, really all of those are on the menu. And if people want to go and do that, we're only too happy to fly them.